Hi, I'm Will. I'm here with Mike. We're the Tabletop Donkeys. Hello. And welcome once again to Warhammer 40,000 Conquest, the series where we have a brief look at the magazine and then we play the battles from the magazine itself. As always, if you want to skip straight ahead to the games, there's a timestamp in the description below. But this issue, we've got our second Death Guard character, the Biologus Putrefier. Yet another stupidly named model, which, I don't know, I think he looks quite cool. He's got lots of grenades and weird vials and things. And actually, yes, it's worth mentioning once again, a character who by himself is relatively expensive, but comes for about, about £8 in the UK with this magazine. Similar savings available elsewhere. And then we've got some information about what he is. And then we have something about the Horus Heresy, which I suppose underlies this conflict to some extent, because it's Death Guard and Ultramarines, both first founding legions. So they've been fighting each other for 10,000 years, pretty much. And it all started by this guy. A famous painting there, em the Emperor against Horus. The cover art of the portrayal at Kalthbox game. Um, some fiction here about the assault on Ajax, a little story. And then we're into how to build our new Biologus Putrefier. And how to paint our Biologus Putrefier with all of his various trinkets. And then Biological Warfare is the title of our first mission. No Geneva Convention in the 41st millennium. So we're going to have a look at that and get straight to the game. So here we are with our first mission for this issue, Biological Warfare. The Biologus Putrefy and the Foul Blightspawn have been conducting foul experiments on the fallen Silver Templars. So the Librarian has marshalled some intercessors and some aggressors to go and deal with them. So there you can see we've got our Biologus Putrefy and Foul Blightspawn for the Death Guard. Placing up against the Librarian of the three intercessors and the three aggressors. So of course new rules for this week are specifically for the Biologus Putrefy. You can see he's got some of his extra rules. He explodes when he dies, potentially. And uh, he's got his blight racks so he can give grenades to friendly models near him. And uh, his blight grenades are much better. They're hyper blight grenades and they deal two damage on a successful wound and they cause a mortal wound if you roll a six to wound as well. Here we've got the full data sheets for them here. And also mentions in this text box about how if you combine the Biologus Putrefier's hyper blight grenades with the Holy Death's Head Grenade from the Foul Blight Spawn, you get a, a grenade that does 2d6 potential hits and does 2 damage per wound. Well, the other, only other thing is the rules for specific weapon types. So now you can see here rapid fire weapons can shoot twice up to half their maximum range. So that means the intercessors now have a 15 inch rapid fire range. And just going off pistols work exactly the same. Assault weapons you can advance and shoot if you get minus 1 to hit. Heavy weapons you get minus 1 to hit if you moved in the movement phase. And uh, grenades again, exactly the same as we've been using them. So that's it for our new rules, we'll head straight into the mission. So as you can see here, the Space Marine player deploys first and takes the first turn. So I'll deploy all my forces and we'll come straight back to that. So here's my finished deployment. So the uh, deployment stars, you have to put the first member of the unit on one of the deployment markers and then the other two have to be within two inches of them. So you can see I've got the aggressors on my left flank, the librarian in the middle and the intercessors on the right. So I've deployed my units, I've got the Foul Blight Spawn on my left, the new Biologus Putrefier on my right, behind the box, because I don't get the first turn, so I don't want to get shot at. Well, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so, as usual, for the first mission of the issue, uh, our objective is just to wipe each other out. Uh, I get to go first, so into Space Marines turn one. So for movement, the Librarian has just moved around this box, and he can actually see the Biologus Putrefier from there. There's a very small gap in between the two boxes. Uh, the intercessors have just moved around, saying near to this ammo crate, so they can reroll ones to hit if they have anything to shoot at eventually. And the aggressors are going to advance. Ooh, six inches, so come back when I finish moving them. So there you can see the aggressors have advanced very aggressively, clues in the name. Um, fortunately, Sergeant isn't quite in range of the Biologus Putrefier to flame him, but the other two are. So we'll head it next into the psychic phase. The librarian will first try to manifest smite on the Biologus Putrefier over there. He needs a five. No, typical. He never gets his first smite, no. does he? And then he will try and do Might of Heroes on himself, that plus one toughness. And he got that with a six. And onto the shooting phase, nobody else is in range, so we've got the two aggressors firing their Flamestorm Gauntlets at the Biologus Peachfire. He is the closest visible enemy model, so of course I can shoot at him. 
We got 4d6 automatic hits. So we got 17 hits, wounding on five. So that's four wounds. Four three plus armor saves. I failed one of them, so he has disgustingly resilient like all the Death Guard. He's failed that, so he goes down to three wounds. Three wounds. And uh, the aggressors advance, so they can't charge, and everyone else is too far away. So it's on to Death Guard, turn one. In my movement phase, the Biologue's Putrefar is going to move his five inches to about there, so you can see he's just within two inches of these boxes to get the re-rolling ones to hit. And then the Foul Blight spawn, his weapon is an assault weapon, so he might as well advance, because it doesn't not going to make any difference to him if I get extra movement. So, ooh, I could go ten, ten inches. inches. Uh, he's just moved up there, he didn't actually move very far in the end. So we'll move on to the shooting phase, and we're going to start with the Plague Spewer from the Foul Blight spawn. So this so, is... I think you roll for strength first. I think you're right, so we roll 2d6 to determine the strength. Five. It's five. Mm -hmm. Going to be wounding on fours. Yep. And then it's a d6 automatic hits. Oh, no, six. Six at least. Well, that's useful at least. So we've got six hits on the aggressors. They're so wounding on fours. fours re-rolling ones, though. Ooh. Fortunately, because yeah. I haven't rolled a single four yet. Yeah, you're going to need that. Potential wound still. So I've got two wounds, so not enough to kill them all. Two six plus armor saves, and he does three damage now, so each one's going to be a dead aggressor. I didn't yeah. make any, so two aggressors will go down. And I think you are still within six inches. Yeah, yeah. I haven't actually thought about this, but yes, I am. Yeah, so you can still in grenade yeah. range. So we're going to make use of the, yes, the once became unholy death's head grenade ability of the foul blight spawn. He's going to give that to the biologist putrefier, but he already throws better hyper blight grenades, as we discussed earlier. So he's going to throw that at the aggressor sergeant. And 2d6 potential hits. Yes, so the unholy death head is 2d6 potential, uh, oh, oh, three. three, wow. <laughs> okay, getting on threes, oh, well, they've all hit at least. Yeah. And then wounding on fives. Wounding on fives. Ooh, one, one wound. wound. Damage two, but Damage no two. AP, so three plus yeah. armor save. Oh, actually, it does a mortal wound, because oh. I've got six to wound. So it's already a mortal wound, but if you fail your armor save, then he's going to be dead. No, so, all right. so, Sergeant takes a mortal wound, though. Yeah. Down to one. Okay, not going to declare a charge. No, no charges, not charging into him. So that's it. For so them. On to Space Marines, turn two. So, first things first, the intercessors are just going to move up to these ammo crates to get the benefit of re-rolling ones to hit. And they should be within 15 inches to rapid fire. Yeah. Yep. The librarian is going to move up, so six inches is about there. And then the aggressor sergeant, and I did think about standing still in order to shoot twice with his flamer. But I'd rather get a guaranteed charge off. So he's about an inch away. So in the psychic phase, the librarian is going to manifest smite. Now the foul blight spawn is the closest enemy model, so it's going to be on him. He needs a warp charge value of five. Oh, an 11. So that's uh, D6 mortal wounds instead of three. So D6, four mortal wounds. It's enough to kill him if he doesn't pass any of his resilience. Past one of them, so he's down to one wound. Down to one wound. And next he's going to try and do Veil of Time on himself, because it would be a seven inch charge to get in. I did think about putting Might of Heroes on this guy for the extra attack and strength, but I'd rather the Librarian gets in, so he needs a six. He gets it with a seven. So on to the shooting phase, I'll start with the Intercessors, so they actually get to do something in this game. And again, the Foul Blight spawns closer, so they're going to have to shoot at him. So they have six shots, hitting on threes, Rerolling ones. Well, that's lucky. That's an exactly <laughs> That's one. an appallingly bad roll. <laughs> so, three hits after the reroll. And Rudy on fives. One, two wounds. Two wounds. Two four plus arm saves. Uh, he's failed oh, both. Okay. So, he needs to make both of his resilient rolls. Oh, he's only made one. And so, the Foul Blight spawn goes down. Yep. And I think the librarian can actually see the Biologus Putrefire because the aggressor's in the way. Alright, I'll fire his pistol at the Biologus Putrefire. Oh, he missed anyway. Oh, he's oh, he's within two inches of the box, so he gets to re-roll that one. He hit. We're only on a five. No. The aggressor sergeant's going to fire his two flamethrowers at you for nine hits. He's very mad about you killing his friends. So he had nine hits. We're only on fives. Ooh. Four wounds, it looks like. Arm saves. Failed two. Disgustingly resilient. Past one, so he loses another wound. Down to two wounds. 
So on to the charge phase. The biologue, the um, aggressor sergeant will declare a charge. So you get to Overwatch. I do. I'm gonna shoot my pistol at now. He has a strange pistol and an injector pistol called, which is strength four and AP minus one, but it does D6 damage. So, yeah, yeah. but it's only got a three inch range. Yeah. But he's yeah. within three inches, and I've got a missed. Phew. And yeah, with a seven, he's definitely in. So he'll go like that to leave space for the librarian. And then the librarian will also declare a charge at the Barmogus Putrefire. He needs a seven to get in, but he can re-roll because he's got a bit of time. So I have to re-roll that five. No, he can't get in. So it's down to the aggressor sergeant who gets to go first. Three attacks hitting on fours. And only one hit. He wound you on a three. It's wound. Six plus arm save. Nope. D3 damage. Three damage. Three damage. Yeah, he goes down. And so the Biologus Putrefier goes down, but on a four plus, he explodes and deals a mortal wound to the sergeant. So he might take him down with him. Revenge! Yes! yes. Boom! So the sergeant goes so down. He just blows as well. up on the so short first game. Victory for the Space Marines. There's no new extra rules this issue, so we'll head straight into mission two. So here's our second mission for this issue, Vectors of Disease. Uh, it's the same forces as last time. However, we actually have objectives now. So the Space Marines have to kill the Biologus Putrefier, while the Death Card have to kill the Primaris Librarian. And uh, the game will last for five battle rounds. And there isn't really anything more to explain. And it's the same deployment style as last time, so we'll head straight in. So I've finished deploying, and you see I've made the maximum use of my two inches of deployment space for my intercessors here on the left flank. And librarian in the middle again, and the aggressors on the right flank, because I assumed William would deploy his Biologus Putrefier behind the box, and uh, conveniently enough he has. It's basically the same deployment as last time, but swap, they've swapped places. So deployment over, we'll head into Space Marines turn one. So the intercessors have moved up, so they're now within 15 inches of the Foul Blight spawn for rapid fire. The librarian once again has moved round so you can see the fire blight spawn in between the gap of the boxes. And the aggressors are going to advance once again. Oh, they're just as nippy as last time. So, and they've got an 11 inch move. And I'll come back once I finish moving them. So, I've been a bit less aggressive this time. The aggressors have just moved up to form a line to cover the librarian. So, movement over, it'll be on to the psychic phase. The Librarian's going to try and manifest Smite at your Foul Blight spawn. Of course he didn't get it the first time. It takes him some time to warm up. He'll try and do my appearance on himself just for the heck of it. We got that with a 10 at least. So Psychic phase over, onto the shooting phase. And the only unit that's going to be in range of the Intercessors who are going to shoot at the Foul Blight spawn. So we've got six attacks hitting on threes. Four hits. And then wounding on fives. Two wounds, two four plus armor saves. Okay, one disgustingly resilient. Nope. He so takes a wound. Down to three wounds. And I'm not going to go to any charges because I'm too far away. On to Death Guard turn one. So we're going to advance with the Foul Blight spawn. With an extra two inches of movement. That should be just enough. Mm. There, so he's within nine inches of those aggressors. The Putrefire is actually just going to tuck in over here and hide. Basically, yeah. In fact, yeah, I'm gonna, so I can't be shot by the intercessors. So, yeah, movement finished. On to the shooting phase. Assume he's gonna fire at the aggressors. He is indeed. So, the strength of the attack would be seven. It's a bit better. It's better. Wounded on threes. No. And four hits this time. So, wounded on threes. Wounded on threes. Three rolling ones. ones. And they've all wounded. All. So, they're actually all going to be in the open there, so you can just roll the armor saves at once. So I need to make at least two to have a man survive. Uh, I didn't make any of them, so the aggressors all go down. Mm. More successful. Yeah, it's going to make things a bit harder. Yeah. That's it for the rest. That's it then for my turn. Yeah. So on to Space Marines turn two. So there's going to be some moving up to get behind this box. Yeah. My librarian's going to move his six inches to there. Right there. So he should be invisible to the foul blight spawn. Be a 
Any big charge to get round though, unfortunately. Yeah, maybe not maybe not quite so far to get to him. Yeah, it might be easier to go that way. It might be easier to go over the box as well. But anyway, then the intercessors are going to move up. Yeah. Things like that. And then like that. And onto the psychic phase, the librarian can't see anyone. But he'll try and do Might of Heroes himself first. Needs a six. Got it with a ten. And then he'll do Veil of Time. Needs a six. He got it with a nine. So that's going to be important. And I don't think anyone can see to shoot either. So straight to the charge phase. The intercessors are going to declare a charge at the Barlogus Putrefire. A five, probably not enough. No. Nah, not quite enough. And then the librarian. So he needs about an eight inches to get to within an inch of the foul blight spawn. I'll declare both as a charge target so I can attack the um, Barlogus Putrefire if I do get in. So need an eight at least. Re rolling. Oh, we got an eight, so that's the bare minimum. I think there's a successful charge, so I can't re-roll it, even if I wanted to. So that gets you to basically an inch away. There. There. Yeah. So we're going in for a close-up. The librarian gets to go first, yeah. but I can pile in like that. And he will now be within an inch of the <laughs> Balogus Putrefire, but end up closer to this guy. And uh, he's going to put all of his attacks on the Balogus Putrefire. Because he's the objective. He has five attacks because of Might of Heroes. Hitting on threes. Three hits. Immunity on fours because he's strength five. Two potential wounds. Two six plus armor saves. Oh, that's going to be important. You'll live. And then D3 damage. Three damage. Which I ignore on fives. Oh. Oh. Jammy git. Ah, okay. So, librarian doesn't cause any wounds, but he does tie you up. But you get to strike back now. So we'll strike with the Blood Logs Future Fire first with his Plague Knife. So, so yeah, three attacks hitting on threes. Two hits, winning on fours, no, winning on fives, re rolling yeah, ones, because he's got Might of Heroes up. So I've got one wound. One three plus armor save. No, Librarian goes down to four wounds. And then the Foul Blight spawn. Same thing again, but not re rolling ones to wound. Two hits. Two wounds. Blimey. Two three plus armor saves. Found another one. Oh. Librarian goes down to three. So we just checked back through the recording. Uh, we almost forgot death for the false emperor again, but he rolled two sixes, so he gets two extra attacks, hitting on threes. Well, so one, one, extra, one hit. extra hit. And it does wound. Another three plus armor save. Yes, he's fine. fine. But then at the end of the fight phase, I'm going to actually consolidate into him oh. slightly, into base contact with him. Yeah, that'll teach you to charge two unarmed guys with a yeah. decent melee combatant. <laughs> yeah, but that's the end of my turn, so on to Death Guard turn two. So, we're going to move four back with this guy from melee. That gets him to about there. The we'll Fall back with the Fightblight Spawn as well. That gets him to about there. Okay. Uh, but that's going to be it for my turn because I fell back, so I can't do anything else. Okay, so it's on to Space Marines turn three. So first thing, the intercessors are going to move up behind that box so they're out of line of sight of the foul blight spawn. But they can see the Barlogus Putrefire to shoot him. And the librarian will move up on top of this container. And uh, so normally we, we wouldn't hub this container, obviously, but we're going to treat it as the same as that because you do hub the rules for terrain. So it's not very clear whether you should use the impassable terrain as the printed terrain is impassable. So it'd be two inches to get to the box, and then two inches to get on. On to the psychic phase. The librarian will try and smite your light spawn. Ooh, almost got the super version. Uh, D3 damage. One. Don't wait on five. No. Yeah, down to two. And then the librarian will put Might of Heroes on himself. Or we'll try to. He got it with an 8. So, onto the shooting phase. We'll start with the intercessors. So, they're shooting at the Foul Blight spawn. One of them will throw a grenade, and then the other two will fire their bolt rifles. Uh, sorry, throw a crack grenade specifically. So, crack grenade on threes, it hits. Wounding on threes, wounds. Uh, four plus armor save. Yes. And then the two bolt rifles, four shot sitting on threes. And the two hits. Moon your fives. Oh, two wounds though. Two four plus arm saves. Are you both of those? Oh, he's Mr. Invincible. 
And then the librarian will throw a crack grenade at the foul blight spawn. Hitting on a three. It hit. Wounding on a three. Didn't wound. So it's on to the charge phase, the all important charge phase. So first things first, the intercessors are going to declare a charge against both of them. Now they need a three at minimum to get close enough to the foul blight spawn. So phew, I think it's going to be enough. So again, in the it, if you were playing the full rules, should should have been able to throw a grenade and overwatch from the foul the bar of putrefied. But the rules as written, we have it says that you can only use grenades in the shooting phase, or specifically it says in the shooting phase a model in a unit can throw a grenade. So it doesn't say you can do it in Overwatch, but it isn't particularly clear. So there's not going to be any Overwatch. So there you can see the other two intercessors have moved up to try and block you off, and uh, Luxard is in the middle to tie up the Foul Blightspawn. Now the Librarian's going to declare a charge. So he'll declare a multi-charge as well, because then if he, if he whiffs, he might be close enough to the Foul Blightspawn mm -hmm. at least. And you won't be able to Overwatch him. But he got a 10, so he can get into the Foul Blight spawn. The Barlog is Futrified, sorry, forgot. I don't get the benefit for charging because the, of the Foul Blight spawn's stinky stench, but I still, it is my turn, so I still get to pick who fights first. And I'm going to pick the Librarian. Got all his attacks on the Barlog is Futrified. Five attacks from the Librarian because he had Might of Heroes. Hitting on threes. Oh dear, only two hits. Wounding on fours. Two wounds, two six plus arm saves. Nope. Um, two d3 damage, four. So ignoring these on fives and sixes, uh, I've ignored two wounds, so <laughs> he's down to two. And now you get to pick who fights next. Well, we're going to go with the Putrefire because, well, he might be dead in a minute, but also he's uh, he's slightly better in melee. Yeah. So he'll strike the... So uh, yeah, we're going to go for the Librarian because he's on three wounds. If I could do some more, yeah, um, I need to kill him. So oh, I've only got one hit though. One hit. Wound on a five. No. no. And then I get to pick next. So the Intercessors are going to put all of their attacks on the. Oh, they get to pile in. Sorry. This guy will move around. We'll go like that. Oh, he can. Yeah, and he can move. This kind guy of more will move like that. So he's actually closer to him, but he's still within an inch of him. So he can fight the the Barlog's Future Fire, but you can't escape. Seven attacks from the Intercessors, or on the Biologus Putrefy, hitting on threes. Five hits. Wounding on fives. Two wounds. Two, three plus armor saves. Failed one. I haven't ignored it, he's down to one. Now the Foul Blight Spawn gets to go. He's going to pile in this way, so he's going to get in base contact with the Intercessor Sergeant by coming around here, but he's now closer to the Librarian. I don't have to get that close technically, but it doesn't matter. He has three attacks, hitting on threes. Uh, two hits, but I've got a six, so that grants an extra attack. Death of the False Emperor. So three hits. Three hits. Wounds on fives. Ooh, two wounds. Two, three plus armor saves. Ooh, oh, no. no money. Down to one. Can't make armor saves this game. No. So that's the end of Space Marines turn three. On to Death Guard turn three. So I can't get the Biologus Putrefire out from in here because he can't fall back any way, no way out for him, basically. So they're both, they're actually both going to stay in melee. On to the shooting phase, and the Biologus Putrefire has a pistol, yep. which he can shoot in melee. So he's going to shoot it at the Librarian. Mm -hmm. It hits on, on three. It does. It wounds on a five. Wounds on a five. It does. Three plus arm save. Four plus, it's minus one. I rolled a six. Anyway. Yeah, it is minus one. Sorry. So the pistol didn't do it. It does d6 damage if it wounds yeah, all these. It would have killed, killed him. Would have killed him anyway. And then we're on to the fight phase. Yeah, so you get to pick first. I do. It's the Biologus Future Fight. Yeah, he's going to try and kill the Librarian. This yeah. is my one attempt. He's got three hits and an extra attack from Death of the False Emperor for that six, which misses. So okay. wounding on fives, rolling ones. Ooh. One wound. One three plus armor save. I made it. Oh, that's <laughs> important. Right, now you should kill him. Now you get to pick, so the Librarian gets to go next. He's got five attacks, hitting on threes. Four hits. Wounding on fours. Come on. Two potential wounds. Two six plus arm saves. No. Uh, four potential wounds. So I need to four make damage. all of these set now. He's, he goes down. But he explodes on a four plus, so he could take the Librarian down with him, like he did the Sergeant. Oh, he doesn't. Phew. Oh, <laughs> that would have been that a draw been if he had. But he goes down. And technically, a big trick of the Space Marines, but we might as well play out the rest of this turn just for the sake of it. Yeah. So you might be able to get revenge. I might be able to kill the Librarian with him. Mm. He gets to attack next anyway. So here he's can... got three attacks in the threes. 
Ooh, uh, two hits. They're both sixes, yeah. so it generates two more attacks. And he's four ma- hits. He's very mad. Yeah, he killed his friend. Uh, two two wounds. wounds, two three plus arm saves. Oh, I oh, made both. Made of them. both. So no, no moral victory for the Death God. Yeah. So we'll play out the rest of the turn. The two intercessors will just pile in to the Balrog's Putrefier. Foul Blight spawn. Foul Blight spawn. Yeah, the one's dead. <laughs> Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Seven attacks hitting on threes. Sixes. Yeah, let's roll that again, please. Really on fives. No wounds. So that's it. Victory for the Space Marines. And we'll recap both of the missions we had this week. So those were the missions for issue 15 of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. How did you think those went? I think they're fairly difficult for the... Yeah, fairly difficult for the Death Guard. Um, well, the Foul Blight spawn is as dangerous as ever. Oh, he's, you know, he's, he nearly he's, killed... No, all... He's even more dangerous now in that his weapon does three damage instead of a D3, which he did the last Oh, that's missing. true, actually. Yeah, we haven't had him since he got his weapon fixed. So, so I don't know why they didn't give him three damage then. No, but... much easier to do it three damage on D3 before. But anyway, he has now does now do three damage per shot. And um, I rolled terribly on the first attempt in the first mission yeah. and nearly killed all the aggressors. In the second mission, I killed all the aggressors in mm. one squirt, so... Well, once again, if you can tie him down in melee, you can use him quite effectively. Yeah, and you did that quite well in the end. You managed to get close enough and then charge. Well, the first one you charged the other guy and then piled into mm. him, and then the second one you charged from behind a box, which I tried to do something about to some extent. I think I could have done a little bit better in my positioning, but it's quite it's very difficult to figure out exactly all the angles you can come in from and where I need yeah, to and it's fairly, cover from and all this kind of stuff. Fairly small area, and it's quite difficult to two with only two models as well. Yeah, exactly. They're two unsupported characters, and so and they're they're both characters that you probably want them in support of things rather than yes, exactly. Being in the I front mean, line. The foul blight spawn when he has a big screen of pox walkers in front of him is much more effective, and the biologist putrefier. Well, actually, let's talk about him now. Um, he's basically a support character for people with grenades. That's basically all he does, yeah. and uh, he didn't have anyone support. Yeah, it's not very good. I mean, you've got his, the wombo combo with his the unholy death grenade and his hyper blight grenade, but that is only once per game. Yes, and I rolled three shots. Yeah, on the two he rolled terribly. For <laughs> it was it. terrible. Although he did cause a mortal wound, so we did get to see how yeah, that works. I think you'd really need him in support of specifically plague marines, so they can use his they can use his grenades as well. And it gives one of the bolt gunners something to do. Yeah, exactly, because it, it's quite good. A dam- two damage grenades quite good against primary space marines and the mortal wound mortal on the wounds. six. He is, in my opinion, the second most useless Death Guard character in that he has one use, as opposed to another character we'll get in a little while who has zero uses. His one use is that if you have a considerably larger army and you're playing with command points and, and, and stratagems, stratagems, both of which are things that we are a long way away from getting to getting to use in these games, then there is a stratagem that allows a unit of Plague Marines to all throw a grenade rather than just one guy. And if he's nearby, that means they can all throw his super grenades. And that can become really quite dangerous when you've got a whole unit of, say, 10 Plague Marines all throwing his Mm. really powerful grenades that do mortal wounds on sixes to wound and so forth. There's other synergies you can draw out as well that make it even more dangerous. That is pretty much his one use. The other use I suggested of using him for hurricane interventions and then using the pistol, hoping he survives a round of combat and then trying to blat a character with his pistol. Yeah, I mean, if, if it's a heroic intervention that he hasn't been charged, then he can do that with impunity because uh, Although he, he actually, can't yeah, strike him. To be fair, I mean, his overwatch range is so short, you'd probably just declare him as a charge target as well. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing to lose, is there, really? Yeah, speaking about his pistol, I mean, I think when you first see the data sheet, you think, oh, a pistol that does D6 damage. But the fact is, it's strength 4 and AP minus 1, so so it's really not worth it, because it has a 3-inch range. You might shoot twice, if you're lucky. So he's a character with a very specific use, basically, and that use is not running around by himself on a small board full yeah, of dangerous this, this units. sort of mission really doesn't show him off very well. It's a bit like the mission with the Blight Hauler, where you don't really get a good sense of how they, how you should actually use these units. No, indeed, and um, although it's kind of, although it's different to have a small board, and it does actually make for some relatively exciting gameplay, it also does make certain units better than they would be on a huge table. I mean, guys with short ranges, generally speaking, are not as much use on a big table. Oh, yeah, the, the aggressors specifically very deadly on this board because they basically in range wherever they go, and they can, if they advance. Yeah, and especially if yeah, as and a full did. six foot by four foot table they're only going to see a small part of the battlefield yeah and I should also point out that the Biologus Putrefier all of his grenade racks are very difficult to paint they're very inconvenient to paint while they're on the model it's probably much easier much easier to paint them on the sprue that's my fault for building them first yeah because there's all little getting in all into all those little twiny bits compared to some of the other models he's probably one of the harder ones much harder than any of the space marines or even the found blight spawn actually 
So overall, quite a difficult set of missions for the Death Guard. I could have done things a little bit better, I reckon. If you, uh, well, if, if you can see what you thought I should have done better, then leave a comment down below yeah. and let us know what you think. Yeah, and I don't think there's too much more to say. So as Will said, if you like this, if you enjoy this content, like and leave a comment and subscribe. We've been the Tailwheel Top Donkeys and we'll see you in the next one.